Hey everybody and welcome to my channel, Rug Time Toys. I am gonna be going over unboxing and checking out this really awesome Mythic Tier Hero Quest um, expansion that came with the Mythic Tier backers of the new Hero Quest release from Hasbro. So there's the Witch Lord and the other game system which I already made a video of. You can check those out in my little board game list. And let's check out what's inside this box now. Four hero miniatures, 18 monsters, Six dice, 14 game cards, four character cards, new tiles, three quest books, and a partridge in a pear tree. So let's go ahead and uh, start digging in here. Rock time toys! So when I saw that they were redoing the hero quest, here's the back of the box, pretty cool looking dragon, um, for Hasbro from the classic Hero Quest game that I have a lot of fond memories with. I had to get the Mythic tier so I could get all the expansions and everything that came along with it so I could eat it up. So I'm going to open this box and show you what you could have gotten or what you can still get if you pay probably exorbitant amount of money extra on eBay from scalpers. But this is what you're missing if you didn't back the Mythic tier. So here's a couple of tiles. You can see these are a little bit close. These are just different tiles that go with some of the new quest books. Um, from what I understand, they are not selling this at the stores kind of like they are the return of the Witch King or the Keller's Keep expansion. This is only for Mythic Tier backers unless you buy it off of somebody on eBay that's selling it, which I'm assuming it's kind of pricey, but I haven't checked. All right, so in the rest of the box, here's all the rest of the contents. We are going to look through it one at a time. Please don't forget to subscribe, by the way, and hit that little thumbs up button. It really helps me out. Here's the quest books, uh, Crypt of Perpetual Darkness, Spirit Queen's Torment, and Prophecy of Telor. These were some of the uh, uh, goals that were met from how many people spent money and backed it. All right, so we had some cards. Here's some more of the uh, extra heroes that you got. So these were all just the goals that were met. Then it comes with new uh, miniatures as well as some copies of one different... Uh, different like poses for some of them here's the crypt of perpetual darkness by dan mangianelli mangianello if i pronounce that right we'll go ahead and just start with these quest book first quest books first um and uh i will try not to spoil too much on the maps but uh you're able to kind of pause it and look at something a little easier if i kind of just leave it here I'm not going to read everything, but just kind of give you an idea. Here's some more of those new tiles, the Grasping Vine Traps, some uh, Dread Skulls. Looks like uh, they have a ranged attack with a strength of two combat dice, a hero it can see with its green eye beams. The skull has one body point. Uh, so they're like different traps throughout. Here's the different uh, cardboards that we saw. I will look at the first map here just to kind of give you an idea how it starts. The Rat and Candle Tavern is quest one. And then uh, I'm kind of curious to see how many quests come up in each of these quest books. Most of the time, with the expansions that we've looked through already, or that I've looked through already and shown a video of, of Keller's Keep and uh, Return of the Witch King, uh, there was actually probably about 10 or 11 quests in each of them. So you get quite a bit of bang for your buck on these. But uh, let's see. So Halls of Doom, Quest 7, <clears throat> Forge of the Mountain King. I actually can't wait to dive into this. I haven't even started playing the base game yet, but I'm assuming that this one that we're looking at now is probably the very last one that you're supposed to do. Quest 10. So 10 quests in this one. Here's the epilogue. It gives you a little story beat, which is kind of nice. All the different artifacts and equipment reference sheet here on the bottom. All right, what's next? Now we'll go ahead and look at the Spirit Queen's Torment quest book. Each one seems to have a little alchemist shop uh, right there at the top of the quest book for you to look at as like a reference guide. This is the new bard hero that I'll be showing in a few minutes. That's another one of those uh, stretch goals that they reached. They reached all of them, basically, except for the last one by Dan Mangianello. But if I'm saying that right again, uh, they gave it to us anyways, all the Mythic Tier backers. This one's by Tiaus Abadia. Man, I'm probably butchering these guys and girls' names, but I'm doing the best I can. Ruins of Wyvern Keep Ground Floor. The Brigand's Barracks. Nelath's Tomb. 
the Goblin Warrens, the Hero Within. The, the thing I always liked about these two is you can kind of make up your own quests if you wanted to. And I do know that there was a couple of uh, downloadable quests that uh, they released on either their um, their uh, Twitter page or their Facebook page. I forget what it was. All right, so 11 quests in this one. The Tower of Water. Man, this one's a lot. There's a lot. The Tower of Air. But I downloaded and printed out those uh, that I was just telling you about. Those are pretty cool. I'll have to probably show those on one of my other videos. Spirit of Spirits. The Spire of Spirits, I mean. And that's it. So there's like 14 quests in this. This is the conclusion. Here's your artifact reference. Again, at the bottom. Pretty cool looking art. Almost reminds me of like Warcraft. The, the way that they did the artwork on here a little bit. Prophecy of Telor quest book by Stephen Baker. Had some pretty big names in here doing some of these quest books. Which is kind of nice. So I'm sure that they're uh, pretty fun to play. Right. Tells you a little bit about this particular quest that you'll be going on here. Return to Melar's Maze. Here's the first quest, the way it looks. I'm also glad that they came up with that companion app that uh, you can download to go along with the game if you didn't know about it already. And what it does is it makes it to where you can basically play the game by yourself and not have to have anybody else with you. But look at that. This thing's like a tower uh, you know, with different levels to basically explore, which is kind of a cool concept. It's been done before, but cool concept to do on here. The Ruined Temple of Gilgareth. So that was it. Just six quests on this one. But I have a feeling it's probably going to be super tough. And then right here it kind of shows you, again, just some more of the story beats and what to expect on this particular quest book. Oh, no, it's not just six. That's just where you get a uh, item, and then you move on to the next quest. All right. Very cool. Quest seven. Quest eight, Telor's Tomb. Halls of the High Mages. So, yeah, you see, you get quite a bit with this uh, Mythic Tier backed uh, Hero Quest expansion. I mean, you got a lot. I think this thing's definitely worth the money the the backing wasn't that bad either for it for everything that you got but uh i am kind of curious to see how much somebody's selling all this for if they're selling it off piece by piece there you go 13 quests in this one or if they're selling it all as a whole but i'd be interesting to see so i'll have to check into that all right so we're done with the quest books now we will move on to the cards so let's see what kind of new cards that we got i'll take off the little card holding paper here we got some artifacts ah some of the new hero class cards we got warlock and then some equipment you got a bard so here's his bard spells some more equipment cards and then you got a druid so all kinds of different ways to play now and here's their here's their hero class cards behind that you can keep as reference if you ended up playing as one of these guys instead of the base heroes. So it shows their stats. I'll pause it, or I mean, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen for a minute so you could pause it if you want to look into it a little bit further. Attack 2, Defend 2. Uh, we got Warlock. I'd be curious uh, to know which one you would like to play as. Here's the Druid. Let me know in the comments below. Um... I mean, I think for my first playthrough, I'd go with one of the original, but this right here, Wizard, looks pretty sweet. I'd probably have to go with that one on the second one. Maybe even the Bard looks pretty interesting. Almost looks like that Wizard was uh, Zargon that you're playing as. But anyway, so here, we'll go through the spells for Druid first. Okay, Life Force. I'll, uh, like I said, just keep it up here so you can read it yourself. Pixie. Spell conjures up a pixie, which can restore two body points, which is pretty sweet. And reveals all traps. Shape shift. Grants you one extra attack and defend dice. It's pretty awesome. And life force. And then we've got, let's see, some equipment cards. Not quite sure what uh, hero this is for, but... 
Here's a dagger. Gives you an extra combat die. And then this long, slender sword allows you to roll two attack dice and maybe use two attack diagonally, which is a pretty sweet. It's almost like the, I think the wizard staff does that too. And then we've got the bard. So here's his spells. Inspiring tail. I think there's three or four of them, maybe three. Inspiring tail. I'm assuming bolsters your, yeah, gives all your extra heroes that you're playing with uh, one extra attack die. So he's kind of like a support character, I'm assuming. Healing Song restores up to two lost body points each hero. That's nice. Lullaby. The spell puts one enemy into deep sleep so they can't move or attack, so that's kind of nice. Always helpful in a room full of monsters, which I'm sure are going to be plentiful in uh, these new quests that they made. An Inspiring Tale. So, oh, no, no, that was the same one from the beginning. So, yeah, just three. All right, then we have... Some more equipment cards. I have a feeling this is for the next hero coming up. So let's see. Wand gives you two attack dice against any monster you can see. It can be used. Um, and then we've got the Warlock. So yeah, that was probably for the Warlock. So Demon Form. Oh, look at that artwork. Looks awesome. And then uh, one extra combat die each time they attack until the spell is broken. And ignores pit traps. I want to look at that one more time a little closer up. That is sweet. All right, fear um, means the monsters get one less combat die. And dark wings. Let's see. Cast a spell on an enemy's turn after you've suffered damage. Reduce that damage to zero. That's pretty sweet. All right, next we're going to look at some artifacts, which I think go with uh, one of the quest books, Crown of Shadows here. I think I saw that in the last quest book that we just looked at. And then the Dragon Spear, which obviously is the Dan Mangianello one. So it helps you roll three attack dice and four if attacking a dragon. That's to probably help take down this awesome dragon miniature that we'll check out in just a minute. We'll save that one for last, of course. Here's the combat die. You get six extra. They're the same exact ones um, as the base game. It's just more, I'm assuming, because you're going to be stronger as you progress through the game. So you're going to need more. All right, let's uh, dig into the new hero box here. I think it comes with, looks like four heroes, four new heroes. Oh, this is probably the female version of the heroes, which is really cool. I kind of wish they wouldn't have put it behind a uh, mythic tier backer paywall and just kind of included that. Maybe they'll include that as an extra option to uh, purchase on the side so that way you can play as female or male. We'll look at the... Uh, Hero die or hero cards for the female warrior barbarian here. It's going to be the same exact stats as the base game, just female instead of male, I believe. Dwarf, two attack, two defend, seven body. You got your elf, female elf. Two attack, two defend, two defend, six body. And then your wizard, which of course has more mind points than anything else. You can see that right there. There they all are together. Heck, you can go in all, all female, female team if you wanted to. Let me take them out of the box here so we can get a better look. All right, here's the barbarian female. Pretty awesome sculpts. I've been very impressed with the sculpts on all these. Let me see if I can get this thing to, there we go, focus for us. Looks like she's definitely ready to wreck something. You see the sword's a little bent, but that's just because of the way they go in the box. You can uh, fix that, I believe, with a little blow dryer and then bend it back and then let it kind of cool down. Here's the mage, I believe this one is. It's pretty awesome. If I can ever figure out how to paint these without messing them up, I will definitely try that one of these days. There's the elf. I like this elf a lot. That one is really cool. And look at that. It's like feather on the back for like the robe or whatever. And then you got the dwarf with a huge axe. That does not look like it's very light. And then what's even best about this little character pack is here's Sir Ragnar which is awesome. So when you go to rescue Sir Ragnar in like the first or seven, second uh, 
quest in the base game. Now you've got the little character to bring with you if you want. Too bad they didn't give you like a Sir Ragnar hero card that you could play him as a hero after that rescue mission. That would be pretty cool. All right, now let's get into the other figures here. So with a little movie magic, I pulled them all out of the box. Here's a quick look at the die. You can see all the different sides. It's the same exact thing. I kind of miss the old die though, or dice from the uh, original classic Hero Quest game because they were wooden. So I'll do a, uh, there's the bard. I'll do a uh, comparison video that you'll have to keep an eye out for. But again, I've done a uh, real close look like I am now at the expansions and uh, you can check those out. I'll, I'll leave uh, a video at the end of this one to click on. Look at that. There's like the uh, talisman of Zargon there. That's a really cool sculpt. You can definitely tell that when they made this, they made it with uh, they, their fans also. Here's the druid. Zoom in a little so you can see a little better. Got her staff there. And there's this one. Almost looks like she has a crazy, like, skeleton hand or something on the right side, or her right hand. Right there. It's crazy looking. It must be, like, some kind of weird transformation happening with her hand or something, but really, really cool. All right, now we'll move into the goblins. Here's a female goblin, actually, I believe. And it's different from the others. I'll probably have to compare the uh, Mythic tier expansion figures to the base game figures so I could show you. Here's an orc with a giant hammer. Man, I do not want to get hit by that. They did a good job making some of these uh, monsters look a little more intimidating, that's for sure, than the original classic one. Here is the uh, Abomination. I like all the extra little like detail on the back here. That thing's pretty cool. Got like all these bumps. Almost looks like they're uh, barnacles or something. Really cool. And then we'll pick these up. We got we have the uh, dread or chaos wizard or warlock. Kind of hard to get to zoom. Let me put my hand back here. That worked. Almost looks like a skeleton wizard or something. Really cool. And then here is the Chaos Warrior. Awesome shield. Almost looks like the uh, Nepro Necronomicon book from Army of the Dead or something on his shield. Look at that. That is so cool. They did such a great job. All right, now we'll grab these over here. I'm saving the gargoyle and the dragon for last, obviously. Got your skeleton with his little Necronomicon shield. See the bones in his spine there. It's really cool. Then you got your mummy. In her classic Halloween pose. And then we got the zombie here. Crazy looking like machete or something in her hand that's all beat up. Then here's the chaos wizard again. Some kind of bat staff. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'll bring these out with the base game once I review the base game here pretty soon. And uh, that way we can compare the different figure models. Here is the dragon. Look at how amazing this is. This thing is huge and, and, and uh, it's solid too. The detail on it is ridiculous. I love it. I hope they come out with some more stuff like this. I know that they're working on more expansions like the Frozen Horror or something like that. Something having to do with ice that they're coming out with. There was like a little Easter egg in one of the interviews of some of the people that were involved in making this and they're getting ready to come out with more expansions. I'm really hoping they come out with some with some big figures like this one. The detail on this is great. I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on all the expansions that I can. But uh, some are a little harder to get if you know a little bit about the Commander of the Guardian Knights expansion that was kind of a debacle when it came out. Here's just to show the different size comparisons. Here's the Gargoyle. 
I'll put the gargoyle up against the dragon here just to show you the size. But first, let's look at the gargoyle for a second. Man, that thing is awesome. You can see the wings almost look like they're cracked stone or something. So there you go. The dragon is definitely like twice the size of the gargoyle, and the gargoyle is a little bigger than all the other characters, of course. So here's the Chaos Warrior. So this was definitely worth it, I think. So if you got lucky enough to get your hands on this, then I'm very happy for you. This is really cool. Kind of see it better with my hands back here. The detail is awesome. I've said that a hundred times probably by now. I'm just blown away. I think they did a great job with this new hero quest that they came out with by Hasbro. All right, so here is everything on the table, just so you could kind of take a quick glance at it all again. You got your miniatures, you got some dice, you got your quest books, you got your cards, you got your tiles. Definitely your money's worth. That'll be the end of this video. Don't forget to check out those videos. I'll put them in the description below. Uh, please also subscribe. Hit that little thumbs up button. Do all that fun stuff. It really helps out. And thanks for watching. Have a good one.